hey guys welcome back to the channel so I was on my way to lunch grab some lunch and I decided to pull over to this park and talk about the watch on my wrist uh, some of you guys are new so you don't really know much about it and for those of you who I guess returning I guess just hear the story again so let's go guys it's a super hot day here in Miami and the wind was blowing so the video that you're about to see is something that I recorded while I was outside and trying to talk but the wind was blowing and I want the quality of my videos to be good so I'm gonna be talking right now about what you guys are about to see and that is my Rolex Datejust 16233 and it's on my wrist right now. But let's go to the video. Now guys, what you guys are seeing that I'm holding is my Rolex Datejust 16233, where you guys could see close up. It's a beautiful watch. Condition, excellent. Case, movement, crystal, dial, bracelet, clasp, perfect. Now, this was a watch that I went after from the beginning. It was a watch, the Rolex Datejust, the Day-Date -Date President, the 36 millimeter watches. Those were the watches that first caught my attention. I used to see these watches on old white men and I thought that this was it. This was considered success. It was these old rich white men and I wanted a Rolex Datejust after doing my research because I saw that that was in the price range where you know I'll do okay so even though I love the day date the president bracelet that 18 carat solid gold I just went after a date just something more realistic to start off so I purchased a 1601 of course it's a two-tone over polished but guys it was my first watch and I loved it for the price that I paid I did well I, got, I gained a profit after I, I sold it. So I wore that watch for a few years, you know, experienced different things through life. And after certain things happened, I decided I want to let this one, let this one go because of the, I guess, memories that I had with the watch. And I was okay with that. A lot of people say, oh yes, get a, a Rolex. Uh, for your first watch and keep it but I was okay with just letting it go now the watch like I said was over polished and I wanted to take a step forward and guys a step forward condition wise and yes with the reference so that was a 1601 I ended up getting a 16013 but ultimately I wanted to get to the 16233. I even skipped and went to 116233, but that watch, I have my opinions on it. That's also a 36 millimeter watch, but that watch itself seemed very feminine. A lot of dealers and everything you hear now on YouTube, you're hearing that women are going more to the 36 millimeter and men are going up to the 40 and even some women are wearing 40 but my opinion is case size doesn't have anything to do with gender but it's all about the look of the watch so this 36 millimeter watch seemed more feminine was real or at least really dressy and i wanted a watch where i could wear it to work out do everything with but that just wasn't fitting so I had it for a decent amount of time and sold it. And I went to, I went backwards. I went to 16233, 
white dial I realized the white wasn't for, for me and then I came to this Rolex 16233 with the champagne dial tapestry I have to add that because that makes the dial a little bit more unique and I love the watch I've tested most watches as, as with, with the Rolex I've tested the Samariners I've had the 16610 I've had the 16613 and again guys the size just wasn't for me it looked okay but it didn't look great so I ended up sticking with the 16233 and the love is just continuing to grow but I do want to look for something else and my eyes have just been gravitating to even smaller watches because I think small watches are more elegant and chic and it's also things are actually going smaller and you guys are gonna slowly realize that um, that watches are going back down to the you know 39 37 36 34 but I think I want to go to a 34 or a 33 millimeter watch and you guys are gonna see why I have my eyes on one actually I have my eyes on three and I may pull the trigger soon now it's okay to fall in love with a watch maybe lose interest for a little bit maybe don't wear it for a while and trust me once you go back and look at it that whole love will ignite but right now I'm, I'm in that feeling of yeah the love is there for this Rolex day just but I want something else and it's not something that's trending you know it's not like a, a Rolex Mariner a Batman or a Daytona or AP sometimes it's okay to somewhat say like go backwards um, or downgrade so to speak but it's literal downgrade but to me it isn't it's just what I want at the moment and this is what I want for the for my future going on as my daily and I've been looking at I'll say I'll say some of the names uh, Omega Seamaster not the Omega Speedmaster which is the popular Omega right now the moon watch uh, been looking at the Omega Constellation and in these two watches even IWC in these two watches I've been looking at the solid 18 karat gold they come in various different uh, variations but I want the solid 18 karat gold uh, with the, the whole case, the case back because they come in different combinations like I said they have gold fill, gold cap, uh, stainless steel uh, they have two tone but I'm trying to get a solid 18 karat gold Omega yes it's a dressy watch but at the same time I could wear it every day casually and I'm trying to go to a leather strap I've been considering putting a leather strap on this but I don't know exactly which one would look you know good on it whether it's a uh, what you will call it a rubber strap I don't know leather there's different patterns there's snake there's uh, lizard um, uh, that's just smooth leather black brown I don't know so I'm just thinking let me just go to a straight one metal not bi metal not two tone a gold and have a strap and enjoy that watch and see how it goes I've also owned guys my watch history start a long time ago and it wasn't even with Rolex of course it was uh, you know regular brands like some fashion brands like Guess, uh, Seiko watches and there's one that stand out right now that just popped to my mind and I had a Whitner now that's a watch name a watch brand that you guys some of you probably never heard of before I'm gonna put some up on the screen and this watch was a 19 it was a 50s 1950s beautiful watch and that's when I think I started really getting into the acrylic raised crystal the dome crystal watches it was a small 36 millimeter watch 
but it was so elegant. It was so simple and perfect for me and perfect for my wrist. Guys, a lot of you out there don't realize that it's all about your wrist size when it comes to choosing watches. Sure, if Rolex give you a call right now and say, hey, we have a Batman for you, I would say go get it right away. Go get it. But please realize and go after what is really meant for you. A 40 millimeter might not be. A 42 might not be. A 45 might not. You know, so go down. Go down to a 36, a 34. And again, everything comes down to the case dimensions. So it's not just here in 36 and 40. You can get a 40 millimeter watch that appears smaller on the wrist because of the lugs, because of the case thickness, because of all different, the, the bezel um, width, uh, because of the dial the dial could be smaller but the bezel could be wide so it's different things to look at when it comes to watches so guys that's enough about me just talking about my watch I uh, I made this little quick little stop again to on my way to grab lunch and I'm just starving right now so I'm about to go eat hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, yeah hit that subscribe button guys 